Hello to everyone! Welcome to my channel! It doesn't matter if you are already parents of many sweet children, or you are a couple trying to get pregnant, or you are happy clients of some medical centers and you are in the middle of the journey. Or, for example, now it's 3 am and you are surfing on the internet with no purpose. It's me! In any case, I invite you to dive into the digital encyclopedia of surrogacy to learn from another angle how the world has recently changed. Let me start blogging from the ground up. What is surrogacy? What do we mean saying this word? I'm going to explain the essence of the phenomenon, its history and how many among us were born by surrogate mothers. Surrogacy is an assisted reproductive technology that involves at least three participants in its process. As described in the book, surrogacy is an arrangement often supported by a legal agreement whereby a woman, the surrogate mother, agrees to become pregnant and give birth to a child for intended parents. As I have already said, three people participate in the process – the genetic father, the genetic mother and, of course, the surrogate mother. A father provides his sperm for fertilization. The mother donates her egg cells. In this case, both parents are genetically related to the baby. However, there is an option to use donor eggs or sperm. In some countries, the initiator of the program may be a single parent or a same-sex couple, but for now we will not overload the definition with amendments. A key character is a surrogate who gives her consent to carry and give birth to a child with or without monetary compensation. She doesn't claim to be the mother of the child's birth. Basically, there are two types of surrogacy – low-tech and high-tech surrogacy. In the first case, the surrogate mother's own egg cell is used to conceive the child. In case of high-tech surrogacy, she is only a carrier of a child without any genetic connection. The history of surrogacy dates further back than you might think. The first time it was mentioned about 4000 years ago. Wow. Of course, we cannot compare the prehistoric surrogacy and the latest artificial reproductive technologies, but in any case, these are part of one whole concept. Another reference to surrogacy is dated 1750 BC and was found in Sumerian Mesopotamia. Even then, surrogacy as a procedure was legalized in the court of law of King Hammurabi. In fact, surrogacy also existed in Egypt. In order not to mix their blood with the blood of the poor, the Egyptian pharaohs took their own sisters as wives. It's clear that due to incest, children couldn't be born with sound health. That's why the local nobility used the services of concubines for the continuation of the clan of Egyptian pharaohs. The gestational surrogacy appeared in an Indian legend dated 599 BC, when the embryo from one woman was carried by another. In ancient Rome, men literally rented their wives to childless couples. Wow. And a child born with the help of a rented mother was later a legitimate child of an infertile couple. Traditional surrogacy is also mentioned in holy scriptures. For example, the book of Genesis tells a story of Ishmael born through surrogacy. Christians in every way defend such interpretation, as in most cases the Christian community speak out against this technology. The modern history of research originates in 1677 and is associated with Leeuwenhoek, who invented the microscope and was the first to see a sperm cell. He suggested that the sperm is a seed while the uterus creates a favorable environment for its germination. In 1790, in order to overcome infertility, the famous Scottish surgeon John Hunter injected the husband's sperm into his wife's vagina and thus carried out the first artificial insemination in the history, which successfully ended with the birth of a healthy child. And already in the 20s of the 20th century, artificial insemination with the sperm of a husband or a selected donor became widely used. Scientific and technical progress and the woman's emancipation contributed to the search for new ways to solve the problem of infertility. Modern surrogacy has become possible by the advent of artificial insemination and in vitro fertilization. This also made it possible to obtain genetic material from biological parents and then implant it for bearing in a natural incubator, the surrogate mother's uterus. According to relatively accurate estimates, there are 7 million people born via IVF procedures on Earth, and this is more than the population of Denmark, Norway, Finland and Uruguay, 
as well as overall population of Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia. It's unbelievable, isn't it? As we mentioned in our previous video, the first successful surrogacy program in the USA and in the world was held in 1980 with the port from Surrogate Parenting Associates, established by Dr. Richard Levin. The first surrogate mother was a 37-year-old Elizabeth Kane from Illinois. The intended parents were a woman who was diagnosed with blocked fallopian tubes and her husband. They entered into an agreement under which Elizabeth Kane was fertilized with the sperm of an intended father. After the delivery, Kane was paid a cash reward. Pregnancy was achieved at the first attempt and resulted in the birth of a healthy boy. Five days later, the surrogate mother gave up parental rights in the local court. Since then, more than 500 babies were born with the help of surrogate parenting associates, and Dr. Levin became a widely known public figure. This topic is quite extensive. I do not say goodbye, I just invite you to watch the second part of this video. See you!